Stop a minute and take in the wonder of this small plot of land. The view from above is often the only one many people have of this lush green meadow speckled with bright color. But move a little closer and you enter a world of sight and sound where you find some of nature's most colorful and important inhabitants. I see it, I see it. It's enough to cause childish delight in grown-ups. Come on, baby, stay, stay. We're waiting for, uh, hopefully, this, that this is an Aphrodite fritillary, and, which we would love to see. And some, of the, some people have never seen it. All because a butterfly won't close its gossamer wings. And this butterfly staying like this. So what we want it to do is go like this, and it's just totally not doing that. Rita Venable knows her butterflies. She writes books and speaks about them, studies them, leads other people to them, and always finds them fascinating. Well, they're so colorful. They are charismatic in a quiet way, but yet they make such a statement. They don't shout at us. They don't bing or beep or buzz or anything like that, but yet they quiet your spirit. When I watch one, I just think, there's something so beautiful, and yet it doesn't say a thing. And I think, I wish I was more like that. <laughs> In this undisturbed life, where a bee might find itself sharing a leaf with a butterfly, a grasshopper clothed in nature's camouflage enjoys some quiet time, and an emerald winged damselfly flaunts its delicate body, nature is working its magic. I think we're so busy in our lives that we fail to notice things that are right under our feet. And when I t taught school, I would say to my children, you've got to start looking where you are. Look at the sidewalk, look near the tree. You're gonna see things you never see. And they just kind of look at me like, okay, she's losing it, Miss Todd, but you know, they began to observe things more. A lesson to learn from the young ones. Find the joy in the mosaic of colors flitting around us. and yellow of the tiger swallowtail bumping a bee. The manic movement of delicate wings mounted on a dark and mysterious flyer. The majestic presence of an Aphrodite, while nearby the ritual of collecting nectar from a bright milkweed goes undisturbed. They're beautiful, even the ones that are brown or may not necessarily catch your attention at first. If you look at them closely, they're very intricate and beautiful. It's interesting to watch their behavior once you get beyond just identifying them. No doubt, there's excitement when one is spotted. Looks like a black saddlebag, Tramia lacerata. Yep, that's what it is. Especially when a distant relative lands a little close. So that's a gray petal tail, and it's a, one of our most primitive dragonflies in the United States. There are only two kinds of petal tails in the U.S. And this is the one that's found in the east. It's um, really rare in some places. From across the United States, these butterfly buffs have come to Savage Gulf, not only to identify their favorite flyers, but to study their habitat as well. Learning about butterflies leads to learning about the plants they use. Wilson, do we have this in Florida? I think this is invasive. This is that um, Japanese spirea. But the primary focus of attention remains the unique insects with the special names. Well, we are looking at a, a Zabulon skipper. It's a, a type of grass skipper. And um, this one's a male. You can tell the males from the females because the males are yellowy orange and the females are darker brown. Now you know a little about the skipper, one of the largest butterfly families in the U.S. You know, this requires a lot of patience. Their visit to the meadow is a success, but each person here knows that butterflies face an uncertain future. Many of them are becoming more scarce, and we don't know what effect global warming will have on them. So the more observations we can make at this point in time, the better off we'll be in the future, and the more we can learn about their needs for survival. That's why it's important for all of us to slow down, absorb the wonders of a world we rarely see, and remember, 
how poorer we would be without butterflies. All brought to life in a meadow deep in the Tennessee woods. It, it quiets your spirit, and I think the fact that it is so different, it kind of makes you um, listen to yourself. You can follow your own yearnings instead of just having something else always dictate where you're going to go, what you're going to do, who you're going to listen to. You can decide that for yourself, and out here you're kind of in control of what you look at, and I like that. <laughs>